So what I would love to do for a starter is to just talk really basically about the parts of the mm -hmm. brain. And the reason I'd love to do that is so that we can then talk about the language that they speak and mm -hmm. start, start from there. Love it. Love it. Okay. So this comes from Dan Siegel's hand model of the brain, and I'm borrowing that from him. So we're going to put our brain stem here in the palm of our hand. We're going to put our subcortical system here. Don't worry about all the names, just know subcortical and neocortex wraps around the top. So if you think about the brain in these three basic layers, we understand that two things. One, each layer speaks in different language to you and hears in different language. And each layer has a different speed. So in general, down here, fast, up here, slow. There's great gifts in being slow. All that intentional stuff you're talking about mm. requires a pause between what we feel and what we do. That pause, I want to be really clear with people about this. That pause does not come from here. That pause comes with the relationship between this part of the brain and this part of the brain. Mm, that's really, I just want to. Uh, yeah. Can we like stop and sit with that for a second? Yeah, that's really The pause really is not a top down forcing. I'm going to stop myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, you can pause that way, but it's ultimately this one still runs your show. Now, what's interesting when I'm talking to this part of my brain, these lower parts, the subcortical parts, and this one's really in charge of like physical safety and regulation. And this part's more in charge of more complex safety and regulation, emotional safety and regulation, right? The more, um, not just is my body okay, not okay, but like, am I psychologically okay and not okay? It's more in charge of that part. And then this one's organizing all this information and trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> With all of that data, right? So these parts speak different languages than this part up here. So when you're listening to me and I'm speaking English and you can hear me and you're taking in my words, this part of your brain, the top part of your brain is hearing the words, right? But like down here, this part of your brain is hearing like the tone of my voice. Mm. This part of your brain is guessing what I'm feeling right now because it speaks emotion. This part of your brain may be coming up with metaphorical images or maybe even pulling images out of your history so that you're making associations between what I'm saying right now and what you're experiencing right now. Because this one does emotion and image. And then this one does sensation and movement. So if you feel something in your heart or you feel something in your belly while I'm talking, oh, we're getting that feed from way down in the bottom. And so if I wanna talk to my lower brain, this is crazy. If I want to talk to my lower brain, it's going to take two things. It's going to take a really good relationship between me and me. Whoa. Love that. Love Whoa. That. And it's going to take speaking in the language they can hear me. So the language of sensation, movement, image, and emotion. And if I try to speak to it just in words, just in saying the right thing, right? It's not going to be able to hear me. Our brain is wired to look at the world through history colored glasses. What? <laughs> so there's a ton of information down here in the subcortical system that knows what I've already been through that knows stuff about what I learned about relationships or how I feel about me or who I am in the world. And that information is feeding up to that top brain every second of every day. So there's no moment when you're not a little bit touched by your history. And there's some hard news about that. And there's some great news about that. It's great in a couple of ways and it's hard in a couple of ways. So the hard news is that, yeah, I can get triggered. I can get flooded. It can happen so fast. I actually can't regulate it. True. The great news is the fact that I am so connected with my history means that while I cannot change what happened, I can change what I learned from what happened.
Mm. But he knew it was true. Mm. So these learnings that we took from our family of origins, they will lay in our subconscious as if they are factual reality. Now, you don't get to choose whether or not you learned this. Your brain is adapted to learn. Next week, when you guys talk about adaptations, I am wondering if you take nothing else from this time with me, take this one thing. I promise you, every single adaptation you ever had made total sense. Mm. It was a gift to you. And if you have not discovered why yet, that's okay. And you will. And when you will, the flood of gratitude is so huge for every adaptation we have, even though, yes, it also cost us. But I promise, 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 it makes sense. That our brains are calorically expensive. So yes. it is more likely that we're going to go keep doing what we were doing unless we unless we pay attention unless we pay attention and particularly when we pay attention to ourselves with kindness and welcoming mm. so i don't mean when i say kindness and welcoming excusing behavior that doesn't work for me as i hear well if i'm kind to myself then i'll just let myself do all these things that are costing me huge that's not my experience actually I think when people are deeply kind to themselves, they more likely move back into their integrity. Mm. And then any behavior you're having that doesn't really align with your true self, if it's easier to let it go. So what I'm hearing you say is, say in the example you just gave, we notice ourselves having a behavior where we it's not aligned with our values. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. We're not saying, oh, I'm loving on you and accepting that you're, uh, you're yelling, right? You're yelling in your house. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, what I'm saying, you're, oh, I'm seeing that you have this behavior of yelling. I understand where it came from. It's not okay anymore. And That's you're not, right. you don't need to go into shame spiral. You're not wrong for having believed it once. Totally. You have to change this now because it's not working anymore. You're That's like, right. That's exactly right. And see, when we do it, can you feel the tone of love, the tone of care, the tone of understanding that's coming vocally, right? And when we hear that, we go, oh, got it. When the subcortical brain is treated like that, it goes, oh, well, that's different. Oh, I was expecting to get yelled at for getting yelled. I was expecting to have criticism come towards me for getting yelled. Now the expectation, who got mismatched. What? Huh? You surprise your brain with the way you treat you. And it's, gonna, it's about to relearn something. Let me say it like this. Okay, now how do I approach my critic voice with courage and kindness? Mm. And go, sweetie. Of course, this is what you learned. It's got such big cost now. There's a better way. A brand new way of relating to myself. Of course, the of courseness of things, I think, can really help us out. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, whatever you are doing makes sense. Oh, of course, you are doing it that way. If I'm confused about something I'm doing, uh, I haven't figured it out yet. I might even say, um, of course, I'm doing it this way. I don't understand why yet. Please do tell me when you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the of course, is good thing, things we can really take it deep and rest in uncertainty with a lot of hope and a lot of ease. If we just say, you know, it probably makes sense if we default there. Oh, yeah. But I'm hearing from what you just talked about, I guess there's two pieces that I want to mm. bring forward. One is that when we pull it out from our mm -hmm. ex implicit memory to our mm -hmm. conscious, to the light of consciousness, see it, we can mm -hmm. release it. That's right. And you can do some unlearning moments, right? That, and even so even internally in you, just how you treat you. If, if you grew up with judgment and then you, you, you pause and turn that judgment into kindness towards you. You just had a different kind of experience, a different kind of expectation about how words function in relationship. Because your relationship between you and you affects your relationship between others. And for anyone who it's hard for, that's okay. 
that's okay. Know that, that know this. There is wisdom in your system that says, ooh, taking in love from me to me is hard for me. Okay, take in one drop. One percent. One drop. One percent. One percent. And then trust your system that that was enough for now. Like how much big T trust can we have? So yeah, yeah, love from me to me. And when it's hard, no, there's probably good reason it's hard and be curious and love that too. <laughs> That's my message to the world. And by the way, it's backed by neuroscience, which makes